The Oxford Concise Science Dictionary defines evolution as following. The gradual process by which the present diversity of plant and animal life arose from the earliest and most primitive organisms, which is believed to have been continuing for the past three billion years. From the American Heritage Dictionary, evolution, from biology, the theory that groups of organisms change with passage of time, mainly as a result of natural selection, so that descendants differ morphologically and physiologically from their ancestors. In other words, one kind of living creature eventually becomes another kind of living creature over millions of years. Now, consider the following scientifically documented indisputable facts. Of all of the planets in our solar system, ours appears to be the only one with any life. Despite all of our looking and the billions of dollars spent, we have not found even the most rudimentary life or traces of it anywhere else in our solar system. Of the 350 known planets in the universe orbiting around suns of their own, ours is the only one, according to scientists themselves, which is capable of supporting life. 349 of the 350 planets are incapable, because of their proximity to their suns, of sustaining life. On Earth, scientists tell us that there are at least two million different species of living things. Some scientific resources estimate that there may be up to 100 million species of living things. If that is so, then that means 98% of species have not even been discovered. In other words, science admits that there is a lot we don't know about life and life forms, the origins of life, and the association of life forms one to another right here on our own planet. Imagine that. What are the chances? Of all the known planets in the universe, 350 of them, ours is the only one capable of supporting life. All life known to man. Any life. Our Earth, apparently, has the perfect location to its sun. A perfect balance of ecosystem. And gravity. And atmosphere. A perfect combination of life-sustaining gases and elements all seemingly designed to support life here and only here all of life known to man in the universe on our planet and only our planet consider man himself out of two million known species man is astronomically off the charts more advanced than the next most intelligent animal on earth According to Edward O. Wilson, a top animal behaviorist and Harvard biologist, the next most intelligent creature to man is the chimpanzee. As cute and intelligent as he seems, think for just a moment. While man manufactures and wears clothing, builds cities, rides in vehicles, builds computers, surfs the internet, and travels in space, while man produces literature, plays, movies, theater, and writes historical journals, Chimps still swing in trees, eat bananas, and defecate on themselves, just as they have since we have any record of their existence. They mimic a few human traits, and they can learn to respond to a few human commands. That's it. They are the next smartest animal to man. If evolution were true, how did man become infinitely, immeasurably smarter and more capable of anything compared to the lowly chimp our next smartest animal out of two million known species and possibly 100 million. On top of all of this insurmountable scientific truth, all of which seems to fly in the face of random natural selection or evolution, consider the following facts that we know. We know that life only comes from other life. That is all we have observed for the totality of man's existence. It's called biogenesis. Yet what does evolution and the origins of life theories of evolution say? That life came originally from non-life, an explosion of rocks, billions of years ago. They call it abiogenesis, or chemosynthesis. Yet there is not one thing scientific about abiogenesis, or chemosynthesis. It has never been observed, cannot be reproduced, even in laboratory conditions, and yet it is still the foundational premise for the evolutionary origins of life postulation. Amazing. Or how about the fact 
that the very latest DNA evidence seems to indicate that humans have always been humans and chimps have always been chimps. There is a scientific fact called gametic isolation, which says that one kind of animal cannot mate with another completely different kind of animal. There are genetic locks between species. DNA will not allow it. The DNA and chromosomal evidence that we have, the best science we have today, seems to indicate the absolute impossibility that one kind of animal can eventually become another kind of animal. Oops, another foundation of evolutionary postulation in the pit of demise. And what about the fact that after 150 years of collecting fossils and after over 250 million separate fossil specimens collected, the number of fossils that show a direct link, evolutionary speaking, between two different kinds of living things is zero. That's right. Out of 250 million fossil specimens over 150 years of collecting, not one is a clear indication of evolution. That is why it is still called to this day the missing link. And then there is this pesky little law of physics known as the second law of thermodynamics, the universal law of increasing entropy, or the universal law of decay. Stated simply, this law states what is a scientifically obvious fact, that over time, left to its own, without outside input of energy, every system, every system, from the smallest form of life or non-life to the universe itself, Every system will wind down, run out of energy, decay, and or disappear. In other words, everything is naturally decaying and winding down. But wait, evolution says that everything for billions of years has been winding up, evolving in an ever upward spiral of betterment of all of the species of life through the random process of natural selection. Gee, that sounds nice, except for that pesky little law. Darn that law. And that pesky little scientific fact that nothing winds up, everything, everywhere in the universe, including the universe itself, is winding down. Darn that pesky little scientific fact. Not only does good science, known science, real science, not support evolution, but common sense does not either. Now you may not wish to believe in God, that is your choice, but in order to believe in evolution, you would have to completely shut down your mind, decide to be ignorant, and then disregard the true scientific evidence that stares you in the face every day. But that would be, well, insane. Go figure.